So uh, it's interesting just listening uh, to that song, John's Parsha. Uh, pretty much uh, covers the scope of what my message is about. <laughs> And uh, I'll apologize up front. I'll tell you right now, I, some of my uh, thinking might resemble uh, those pictures of subatomic particle tracks you see from the Large Hadron Collider. I'll try and get it organized as we go. I, I was, uh, you know, praying about the message this week, and there's been a and a few things that have occurred this week that are uh, interesting and all seem to have an underlying theme. I, t I was talking to one of the guys at work uh, and actually mentioned that I, I was doing a message this week. And, you know, he was like, well, maybe you should do the message on, uh, you know, sharing the gospel. Always a good message, right? We can't. We can't uh, we can't be encouraged enough to share the gospel. Uh, the good news is what's really needed in this world. I mean, clearly there's a lack of hope. There's a lot of desperation out there today. Uh, and you know, I was like, well, you know that that's always a good message. So you know, I'll pray on that, but. Then I was talking to my younger brother who, who proclaims a faith in God, uh, seems to be struggling with this whole idea of getting baptized and whether that's necessary at all. And uh, of course, we got into a, a discussion of, uh, you know, what is necessary for salvation and I, you know, I don't believe you have to be baptized to be saved, but clearly baptism is the outward profession of your faith. And I think it is a, an important thing personally for people to, uh, to profess that. I, I mean, I can, in private conversation, I, I can agree or admit to believing lots of things, but if I'm out in public, and I don't want to. I don't want to admit or acknowledge those beliefs. Then where's the power in that? There is no power. Anyway, uh, you know. So those things came up. My father, actually, who we have prayed for in the past, and I've been praying for for a long time, uh, has expressed a desire to get baptized and has actually been taking part in a Bible study. My dad, of course, is one of those guys who, uh, you know, says, well, I couldn't go to a church because if I went to a church, it would collapse on all the people in the, in the place. You know, uh, <clears throat> you know I, I can't be forgiven because I've done so many things and they're so bad that God just couldn't possibly forgive me. And, uh, and like everyone else in this world, he's done his share of things that, <laughs> believe me, you know, uh, require forgiveness. But then so have I. Uh, but at any rate, you know, in in uh, in thinking about all these things, meditating on it. Of course, I was reading the parsha myself, and uh, and I happened to read a couple of news articles and. And it kind of focused in on on just a, you know. I always feel like most of the things I have to say to this congregation is basically preaching to the choir. I mean, I, everyone seems to have the the same understanding and and beliefs generally. You know, we obviously we have, we have lots of little things we could uh, debate, but. Uh, on all the main and plain things where we're all in agreement. But at any rate, uh, I was reading an article about, uh, about these men who were convicted of laundering money uh, back in 1991. 
and there's a uh, there's a move to try and have uh you know have their sentences uh what's the word uh basically they want to say hey uh they've served their time we're gonna turn them loose right so not not saying they were innocent but basically just uh reducing their sentence and the reason for that was there were four men and i i haven't looked but judging from their names a couple of them seem to be jewish uh their business and they were all successful businessmen was in gold and precious gems and i don't want to be stereotyping people but you know uh that was their business they were arrested for laundering money for a cocaine cartel back in 1991 and this judge they they went through an eight month uh, trial they were found guilty they they were found not guilty of charges involving actually being a part of the cartel or distributing any cocaine but they were found guilty on charges of money yes commute their sentence thank you john <laughs> that was the word uh they they're looking to have their sentences but anyway uh so the judge had made a statement pre trial that he was going to do his best to put an end to to this issue of you know money laundering and and uh, this cocaine distribution system and and i would tell you that you know especially back in the 90s from from the you know 80s through the the 90s cocaine was a, a serious issue here in this country and, and i mean it still is there's still plenty of people who do cocaine and but the cartels really developed a, a lot of power and a lot of money at the time anyway uh, these men were sentenced to 514 years right this judge uh made all of their sentences uh consecutive right so one right after the other 514 years so you know without getting into too much of it the fact of the matter is you know if they're guilty I, i'm a firm believer that at some point you know you need to make you need to make a statement right uh, I think a statement needs to be made uh, regarding the rioters and looters that we have and the issues that are going on in Seattle and Portland and Chicago. However, <laughs> I also know that uh, my flesh can get in the way of, of right, good, you know, prudent wisdom in in uh, handing down sentences so it was kind of interesting in reading team about judges and we see again that god in his wisdom has given us his word given us the torah that lays out for us <laughs> right and wrong and how to go about uh judging these things there there are uh you know numerous verses and uh, i know you guys have read plenty of them we won't go through all of them but you know so this idea that you know again we are living in a world that is rampant with chaos not not just here in the united states but worldwide you know there are so many issues uh you know it's all we hear about lately of course is the covid 19 but uh you know there are the whole george floyd thing and the and the uh protests around the world the uh the struggles between uh 
Islam and Christianity and the number of Christians that are being persecuted in other parts of this world that, that you know, our mainstream media doesn't ever want to really cover. Right? We don't hear about those things. John was telling me earlier about, uh, you know, a video dealing with uh, Seattle, and we're not seeing the, you know, we're not seeing the full extent of the damage that is being done to the cities in the United States. I, I saw an estimate of over $100 billion in damage done by mostly peaceful protesters. Well, you know, we, we do need to separate, right, the, the people who are truly protesting, who are, you know, uh, who are using their First Amendment rights of, of free speech as opposed to the other people who have a totally different agenda. But so, and I'm trying to paint a bigger picture here. On the one hand, we have this judge and many other judges who are determining sentences based upon their own understanding, their human understanding, of human laws, not taking into consideration God's counsel on how to justly uh, adjudicate, uh, you know, uh, cases. Then we also have things like <laughs> I, I, I thought, well, you know, how does God's word line up with? let's say the the democratic and, and let me throw a disclaimer in here uh not that we we're not a 501, are we 501 c3 no so that that's good not that it matters anyway but today in in here in august of 2020 we are hard pressed to draw a line between politics and anything else because it politics has pervaded everything that we deal with uh, everything I, I mean the music industry entertainment industry fashion uh, religion I don't care what aspect of our lives you look at there's a political uh, implication to it we we have people wanting to boycott certain things because of certain political uh, consideration so anyway i i went and I, I was reading through the democratic platform and then i said well you know in the interest of fairness uh, i should read the republican platform well yeah i don't know if, if you guys have read either of those and, and they're they're pretty lengthy but uh, just reading through the Reading through the table of uh, contents and the preambles is pretty enlightening. Let me uh, just share something with you. <clears throat> so, uh, with the. Uh, okay. So, what led me actually to read. Uh, both the Republican and Democratic uh, uh, party platforms for 2020 was this other article I was reading having to do with a Presbyterian minister who was making the point that Trump and his supporters don't speak for Jesus. Right? Now, I, as a believer in Yeshua, I try to do my best not to speak for Yeshua, right? However, being a believer in Yeshua and knowing that as a believer in Yeshua, we are indwelt by the Holy Spirit, certainly my actions are supposed to reflect Yeshua, always. Anyway, this, this uh, Presbyterian minister, what I, what I 
found interesting was uh, he was saying that he's a biblical scholar and a Presbyterian pastor, and the language that Trump uses, you know, in that the president maintains that Biden is going to do things that nobody ever would ever even think possible because he's following the radical left agenda. Take away your guns, destroy your second amendment, no religion, no anything, hurt the Bible, hurt God. Firstly, I'd say, you know, uh, knowing the media as I do, there, there are different, you know, different aspects of how this was reported. But, you know, Donald Trump, he is not the greatest communicator and I know, those words in one form or another uh, have, have been said by him. But then we have someone who claims to be a believer and he's making the point that Trump labels himself a Presbyterian who attends church occasionally, but he clearly has not heard a sermon on divine sovereignty. Uh, so he's saying that uh, nor is Trump aware that the Bible is a complex text written over many centuries and that there are different ways of interpreting its content that's the part i had a problem with actually i have this discussion quite often with my brother uh, as human beings yes we we can read the same thing and get different things from it but can i just say that god has one truth right if if god's truth is not one thing now again that one thing may be interpreted different ways by different people because of their own personal biases or because of their own nature and the sin maybe that you know they have kept hidden you know uh and so it it manifests itself in that way but god's word his instruction uh, it, it is a straight line. <laughs> it, it doesn't deviate. You're not going to find different interpretations of it. It's that whole idea of different interpretations of one truth that has led us to the problems we have today. Certainly, it, it's, it's what explains the 43,000 Protestant denominations, the fact that uh, you know, we could have people saying, oh, all roads lead to heaven. They don't. The Bible says, and actually I saw this, uh, this meme on Facebook, and uh, one of the people that uh, we know from our congregation earlier had actually put it up, and I was like, well, you know what, that, that uh, is pretty interesting. Ah, so uh, it, it was just a little thing that said, Torah is the way. It's in Psalms 119.1. Torah is truth, Psalms 119.142. Torah is life, Deuteronomy 32, verses 46 and 47. And Messiah is the way, the truth, and the life, John 14.6. So, here in four different places in scripture, we know that Messiah is the Torah. If you believe in Messiah, Yeshua, then you believe that the Torah is valid and the Torah is our instruction and there is only one truth again, you know. So, you know, the specificity i i always like that you know god is very specific but you know i was noticing so so i went now i'm looking at at uh you know well what what is god's instruction for living and you know i so i google biblical instruction for living and believe it or not it was like 99% of the stuff that came up, number one, was all New Testament, right? All Brit Hadashah. Is there a problem with that? No, 
I mean, let's face it, uh, you know, the Brit Hadashah is, is uh, exceedingly important to us, right? I, I live by verses in, in the Brit Hadashah daily. However, let's, uh, let's get here. I, I had lots of different things going on. I got to right here. Uh, but what I was noticing was that the uh, the verses in the Brit Hadashah are much more, uh, they lack the specificity, all right? They, they deal with being, you know, submitted to God, being led by the Spirit. Uh, I'm still looking for my thing here, but basically, uh, you know, more along the lines of what we would call platitudes, which is which is not a problem. And so, just for example, here, I got it. Now we have uh, Galatians two twenty. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Absolutely. I, I have no problem with that. But, you know, if you're a believer who, you know, pretty much stays in the New Testament, what exactly does that mean to you, right? I, I've heard plenty of people, you know, they, well, you know, I just, I, I just go by the red words, you know. Uh, Jesus never said anything about homosexuals. Jesus sat down, you know, with the with the tax collectors and the thieves and all of this. Uh, you know, so we should be tolerant of everything, uh, judge nothing, and uh, everyone's going to be happy. <laughs> but you know, uh, that's that's not what Scripture says. Uh, so uh, Colossians 1.10 says, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Again, that's very good. And I don't see how you could read that verse without understanding that increasing in the knowledge of God would be to be in the Tanakh, to be in Torah, and understanding the basis of all of these wonderful verses in the Brit Hadashah, because the actual meaning, the, the meat of them it is located in Torah. So, uh, you know, Romans 12, 1 and 2, uh, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Again, yes, that's exactly what we need to do. And yes, it has no meaning without the context of Torah. You know, so I'm I'm looking because one of these other verses, uh, they actually had the verse from Mark here. Uh, <clears throat> see if I can find it real quick, because I do like it. Mark 12, 30 and 31, which is, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no greater commandment than me. Uh, and of course, that's repeated for, you know, in, in our Bible, it's, it's stated first in Matthew 22, 37 through 40. And of course, he pointed out when, when he said it there that this is the first, uh, I, I'll just read the whole verse. Jesus said to him, Yeshua said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. 
on these two commandments hang all the law and prophets. Uh, so, again, I know I'm preaching to the choir, but that is what it's all about. So, I'm like, well, uh, you know, that's what Yeshua said, which means that clearly it's in the, in the Torah. And of course, you know, we see it all the time in Deuteronomy 6, 5, right? Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. And in Leviticus 19, 18, can you look that up for me? I didn't write it down, sorry. So Leviticus 19, 18, says, uh, ah, you are not to take vengeance nor bear any grudge against the children of your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am Adonai. So in those two verses, we have love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might, and love your neighbor as yourself, both, both in Torah. So you know, and of course, we we already know that Yeshua isn't saying anything that didn't come from the Torah, right? Didn't change anything. Uh, there, there are so many different uh, references to the fact that, you know, <laughs> Yeshua, uh, he is the Torah, and nothing that he says differs in any way from what we read in the Torah. So again, now I'm looking around at at all these things like the the uh, Republican platform and the Democrat platform. And what I saw what I saw was uh well here in the Republican platform in the preamble let me just share this with you because I, I thought it was I thought this was interesting because people would say, you know, what we have here in the United States is this disconnect between Democrats and Republicans, right? Democrats clearly for the people, you know, they want to help the people, take care of the people. You know, uh, take care of the the uh, environment, uh, change the climate, all of these things. The Republicans, of course, just want to enrich rich people at the expense of all the other people, but they claim to be believers in God. I don't know if you're familiar with this. Again, this is the Republican platform. Listen, this is out of the preamble. Listen to this paragraph. The president has been regulating to death a free market economy that he does not like and does not understand. He defies the laws of the United States by refusing to enforce those with which he does not agree. And he appoints judges who legislate from the bench rather than apply the law. We, as Republicans and Americans cannot allow this to continue. That is why the many sections of this platform affirm our trust in the people, our faith in their judgment, and our determination to help them take back their country. Now, I'm not sure who's running for president under the Republican Party. I thought it was Trump, but I'm getting the impression here that maybe it isn't. I'm. I mean, had any of you heard that? This this is the Republicans. So then I'm thinking, well, you know, I heard enough stuff from the, the Democratic National Convention about Trump. I mean, every night they had speeches by numerous dignitaries talking about how evil and terrible and you know unqualified and unable. Donald Trump is to do the job. And 
I would not sit here and tell you that Donald Trump is, is a great Christian. I don't know. I don't know Donald Trump's heart. God does. I do know that God puts our leaders in their positions over us. And I do know we're supposed to pray for them. And up to the point where they are going against God's word, we obey what they want to do. Uh, but I did find it interesting that both the Republicans and Democrats seem to not like this guy. It, it, it makes you wonder what, what exactly is going on. So then I, I'm reading through the Democrats' platform, and of course, like I said, they have all these these wonderful programs. And the only problem is that uh, it, it's it's worthless. Their their whole platform is worthless, just like the Republicans, because nowhere in there do they attribute our success to our faith in God, right? Now, hey, they will talk about that. I heard someone talk just the other day about Joe Biden's faith in God. Well, you know, I'm if if you're in a party that is supporting and pushing for greater latitude to kill babies, <laughs> you know, if, if you are in a party that is denying that God made us male and female created he them that's the way i read it not male not lgbtq plus plus it, it, that is not in scripture again love thy neighbor right we need to love these people but we need to start getting a grip on on what these words actually mean right uh, uh, justice is not necessarily 514 years for laundering drug money. You know, it, it, it just isn't. Uh, justice is not prosecuting police officers who are trying to do their job, and in the course of that, someone else gets killed. I mean, again, we can have all kinds of discussions about the George Floyd thing or or Rayshard Brooks, but, you know, again, you know, what do you expect of people? But if we don't acknowledge, and, and believers, I'm talking about believers because, you know, I expect nothing from uh, an unbeliever except to pursue their human nature, which we already know, God says, every, you know, imagination of their heart is only evil continually right that that didn't change after the flood so uh anyway how how do we you know what what are what are we supposed to be doing so you know i'm i'm right back to you know we really need to be focusing on what god's word said I was talking with my brother again earlier this week, and and uh, he was telling me, "Hey, you know, I really like that. Uh, I really like that one verse you know, about the the lamp, uh, you know, on your feet and a light to your path. You know, where where is that at?" And uh, <laughs> it was like, "Well, you know, Psalm one nineteen, and, and I'll admit to you." I, I wasn't pulling up exactly uh, which verse it was, even though I have re I recited that verse in an awful lot of martial arts belt tests because we always did. We always recited Bible verses for extra credit. And because my kicks weren't as good as most other people's, I got as much extra credit as I could reciting Bible verses. <laughs> Uh, I recited 138 of them one night, and then they kind of got tired of listening to me. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, uh, but Psalm 119, 105, right? And then I told him, I said, you know, Dan, I know you struggle with a lot of things. You know, it would be 
a good thing for you to go read Psalm 119. Because Psalm 119, every verse deals with the value of God's precepts, his laws, his instructions. There are so many different words for the Torah there that it's incredible. You know, I can remember as a kid, you know, reading it and it's like, you know, this, this is just too much, right? But, you know, uh, what's 119.13? Lips are my lips are what? Right here, uh, starting in nine, one nineteen nine. How can a young man keep his way pure by guarding it according to your word? With my whole heart have I sought you. Let me not stray from your mitzvot. I have treasured your word in my heart, so I might not sin against you. Right. I have hidden your word in my heart is the way the NKJV renders it. And I always like that. Blessed are you, Adonai. Teach me your statutes, right? My lips, I rehearse all the rulings of your mouth, right? So, you know, when you read through Psalm 119, it, of course, so... (laughs) Uh, John, you were saying something about, oh yeah, the king, right? Part of this week's parsha was the king writing down his own Torah scroll and then reading it every day, right? I know that for me to commit something to memory, it really helps if I write it down. But the important thing is, is committing it to memory now it's, you know some people are a lot better at memorizing stuff than others and just because you're not good at memorizing something doesn't mean oh well you must not be a christian because you can't you can't memorize god's word but uh <clears throat> but we need to we need to be continually reading these things and getting them into our our spirit uh but all of 119 points right to the Torah, right? Because all those statutes, precepts, commandments, mitzvot, right? Judgments, all of those things are what is laid out in the Torah. So, again, I'm looking at the Democrats. Uh, you know, we're, we're going to get equal justice for everyone. How many times over the years has it been said, and certainly been said by plenty of Democrats, about the issue of abortion that you cannot legislate morality, right? You can make all the laws you want. I'm sure you all know we have plenty of laws on the books. We have so many laws on the books that probably 90% of them are never even enforced because the people who are responsible for enforcing them don't even know what they are. We have laws on the books that have been determined to be obsolete, right? There are still plenty of states with laws against homosexuality, right? Uh, Sodomy. And and they're not even enforced, but they're still on the books. Uh, The point is, making laws does nothing. I I wish that our congressmen and women and our senators would understand that, you know, if they wanted to serve the American people, they wouldn't be up there just making laws willy-nilly. We don't need, they would be, they would serve us better spending the next 30 years eliminating the laws that we don't need and enforcing, you know, putting into place the ability to enforce the relevant laws that we have, because those are not being enforced. So <clears throat> to try and wrap it all up, we clearly have gotten away from God, right? We've removed God from our schools, separating a church and state, no Lord's Prayer in school, 
<coughs> excuse me. <coughs> we we have moved to the law of man, the wisdom of man in explaining how we got here, what we should be doing, how to conduct ourselves, and it clearly does not work. <laughs> I mean, anyone with a half an ounce of common sense would understand that, hey, uh, there's a problem here. You know, we've had for the last 40 years, right, and, and that's being generous, but for 40 years, uh, we pretty much have had God out of the picture in most public schools in America. And have things gotten better? No, no. I, I mean, <laughs> we have we have people who proclaim their love for the people running cities like New York and Chicago and Portland and Seattle. Here in the state of Washington, it's been 40 plus years of Democratic governors have things gotten better? No, they have not. People are, we, right? Why would they be talking about defunding police in Seattle if things had gotten better over the years that we've had these Democrat governors? Again, Democrat, Republican, anyone who is not believing in God and not conducting themselves according to God's word, the Torah, uh, it is not gonna get anything right. So the encouragement. We need to we need to really double down. I see too many Christians, people who have proclaimed Yeshua as their Lord and Savior, online making comments in the news uh, that do not line up with what Yeshua taught, and they don't line up with Torah. We have to reflect. We're supposed to reflect Yeshua. That that loving your neighbor, that whole thing, which I'd love to discuss more, because loving your neighbor isn't giving them a handout. Loving your neighbor isn't, hey, let's have free everything for everyone. You know, if I'm sitting here and I'm not working and I have no money, uh, you wouldn't consider it loving your neighbor if I went and stole from someone else to give it to the guy next door. I mean, that's not loving your neighbor. And yet that is where our government's at. And it's it's at it's there with you know both parties, frankly. The the ideas of personal accountability, integrity, character, these things we, we've allowed them to slip away and as i said i i see from this op-ed by this presbyterian pastor how, how can you even be making the comments you're making and proclaim that yeshua jesus christ is your savior because you're missing the whole point uh you know regardless of of who wins this next election you know how much that's going to affect any of our salvation? Zero, right? I I am not counting on the Republicans or the Democrats, Donald Trump or anyone else for my salvation. I have salvation. The question is, what are we doing with our salvation? Right? We need to reflect Yeshua. We need to love our neighbors. We need to be that light and salt. We uh, we need to take even firmer stands. I, I mean, uh, at some point, I know this is going to come crashing down. I, I've thought about uh, John had mentioned uh, Francis Schaeffer and uh, the Christian Manifesto, right? I I went and I I took just a minute and, and went and looked. I saw a little two minute video. <laughs> Francis Schaeffer talking about disobeying government, right? He was making the point that, and, and I got to wondering about this whole mask thing, vaccine. 
he was making the point that if we say that as a people, as a good citizen, I cannot disobey any law that the government or any mandate, any proclamation that the government puts forth. I can't, I can't disobey that because they're all powerful. We are making them a God, right? We, we owe that, uh, that unmitigated loyalty only to God. Uh, mankind, governments, <laughs> we, here we have people disobeying the government and, and the government's doing nothing about it, which tells me the government is supporting what they're doing. Uh, we should be as bold as those people in standing up for what's right. And, and we really kind of need to determine where we should be on some of these, these issues. But uh, I, I just encourage you to be continually in the word. Again, I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but sharing with other people, hey, it, it's not just reading the red words. If, if you don't have an understanding of what those red words were built on, uh, then, then you, know, you have no fixed point of reference because I can make those platitudes say whatever I want them to say. But the specificity of God, when you get back into Leviticus, uh, gets a little harder to, uh, to dance around. Let me say that. Uh, so. Uh, I just encourage us all to to be in the word, to hold each other accountable for our actions. I, I mean, hey, I I can get wound up sometimes and say things that I immediately have to apologize for because you know I I said it before, spent enough time thinking about it, or before I allowed you know the the Holy Spirit who is in me to to uh you know filter my comments uh but but uh you know we are in a great time what good is our faith if we're living in wonderful times you know what i mean i mean you know if if there's plenty of prosperity and everyone's healthy uh, you know what good is your faith? It's it's like Yeshua says in in Matthew. You know, uh, hey, you know, saying saying uh, good morning to some. You know, here, let me Matthew. Huh? I'm going long. I'm being told, so <laughs> I apologize. Frankly, this morning I didn't think I was going to have ten minutes worth of anything to say to you. But <laughs> let me. Let me just find this real quick and we'll uh, wrap this up. <laughs> oh my goodness. I hope I can find it. Let's see. Uh... Let's see. Right here. Uh, for if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Even the tax collectors do the same, don't they? And if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than anyone else? Even the pagans do that, don't they? Therefore, be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect, which I believe John mentioned earlier as well. So, again, let's uh, let's act like we're we're uh, in indwelt by the Ruach HaKodesh and, uh, and hold each other accountable for that. And God bless you all, thank you.